Hey guys, OG Alpine here, bringing you guys our PMU Season 9 Week 1 battle against Trexo and his Portland Timbers. Now, Trexo is a really cool dude. Definitely go check him out in the description below. I believe he will also be uploading this season. So definitely go give him a look, give him a like on his video, sub to his channel, all that good stuff. I, I would really appreciate it. And if you're new here, be sure to drop a sub. I'd really appreciate it. Um, and yeah, with that being said, I am going to do a quick little team builder like we do with all of our draft league games. Just telling you what I'm bringing, why I'm bringing it. There will be a timestamp a little bit earlier in the video, um, letting you know when the battle actually starts if you want to jump ahead to that. But for those of you who want to stick around and see the EVs and move sets and items, and all that good stuff before um let's go ahead and jump into it so our team if you missed the draft analysis go watch it um but it's at the top of the screen it consists of weavile komo empoleon forges pylo swine rotom fan neolego shaman slowbro uh pyroar and the mega alakazam well trexos team is chilling at the bottom of your screen it consists of zapdos alola muck crocodile serena Bronzong, Armaldo, Mimikyu, Politoed, Mian Xiao, Ludicolo, and Mega Swampert. So we're playing Rain. Um, it's uh, it's really good that we have Mega Zam against Rain, obviously, because we can trace the Swift Swim and all those sweepers and actually outpace every single one of them and threaten them out with either Psy Shock or an Energy Ball or something like that. Do a ton of damage. The only issue is, of course, the one Rain team we play, for some reason, has a Lolan Muck plus Crocodile. Now, Crocodile isn't as big of a deal to, uh, isn't as big of a deal to um, obviously beat. Uh, we have Energy Ball to kind of rip through that, which you'll see. But uh, Muck, <laughs> that's not fun. So we're gonna have to get a little bit creative with stuff. Um, Zapdos, not too big of an issue. Like I said, Muck and Crook is a little bit annoying. Armaldo actually is a big threat. I'm very scared of an SD Armaldo. Uh, a lot of my Fizz Def checks don't appreciate bug coverage. Um, bug plus ground kind of rips me. So we're gonna have to be careful about that as well. Mimikyu, Probably in my mind, um, either the biggest or the second biggest threat to us. Uh, I don't deal very well with the plus two Mimikyu. I don't deal well with the stab combination of Shadow Claw plus Play Rough. So again, going to have to be very, very careful around that thing. And then uh, the other big, big threat to our team is going to be Ludicolo. In the rain, Life Orb Ludicolo, pretty much two eight KOs my entire team. It's uh, almost unavoidable, so we're going to have to be very careful about that thing. I can't take a uh, utility umbrella on something like I can in Generation 8 to not take the boost from Hydro Pump in the rain. Uh, so that's terrifying. Mega Swampert can get a little bit out of hand, but honestly, part of me expects Pert not to come, being that I have a uh, slow of Shaman, and then um, obviously have Zam to outspeed and deal with them. But um, it could come nonetheless because it kind of rips the rest of my team. So uh, yeah. That's obviously going to be, uh, you know, kind of the matchup of my initial thoughts. We can go ahead and jump into our first mod, which is going to be big, big Alakazam. Rocking out with the Alakazite, obviously. Uh, traces its ability, Psy Shock, Energy Ball, Miracle Eye, and Recover. EVs wise, we got 68 HP, 220 special attack, 196, I mean, 220 defense, 196 special attack, force per death, and 20 speed, which is genuinely hilarious, by the way, uh, and 20 speed with a uh, a bold nature, actually. Now, Zam is definitely needed in this matchup. It is my best way of really outpacing and revenging his reign. Um, I can revenge uh, things like Armaldo after a little bit of chip. Things like Ludicolo after like a life orb chip and rocks. I can always kill the Swampert. Um, and with Rain Up, I outspeed everything. Guaranteed, even like a Scarf prep will be able to deal with. However, like I said, the only issue with that is the fact that he has double dark and one of them is a Lolan Muck. So we kind of struggle with our coverage a little bit here. If Muck wasn't an issue or just didn't exist, I'd be able to take on Shadow Ball here and this Pokemon would absolutely just rip through check. So he would have genuinely nothing for it. But I do need the Miracle Eye just for that muck um in case it wants to switch in as i uh, you know i'm able to hit it with a miracle eye and then i'm able to force it out or hit it really hard with the side shock hit it incredibly hard with the side shock or hit whatever he wants to come in the only issue with the double dark is that he can kind of pivot between crook and muck but energy ball really should blow through cook um we are a bit of a more of a defensive spread uh just because we can kind of afford to we really only need to creep me in shall 
Um, and that's it. His speed tiers really rely, his speed in general really relies on his rain sweepers outspeeding everything. And obviously with Trace, we shouldn't have to worry about that at all. Uh, so we just craft his fastest mon. Uh, EVs wise, we live a life orb, Ludicolo, Hydro Pump after rocks because our spadef is pretty solid. Um, we live a scarf, Crook Knock after rocks with our, uh, you know, HP plus defense. And we also live um, 12 attack, like if he just has like, you know, 12 EVs left over because level 50. Um, 12 attack mux knockoff into a shadow sneak uh, which is obviously actually genuinely amazing because we can actually 1v1 that thing side shock does so much damage to it especially if it's like an av set uh personally i think av should come though curse is actually a really big issue so it really just kind of depends on how scared of uh, zam he really is um if he's like i have double dark and mimikyu and bronzong which is kind of fair he should be okay. Now we don't have Shadow Ball coverage for the Bronzong, but I figured that um, Recover was really, really nice in this matchup to kind of recover up and get out of range of those Scarf hits from Crocodile if we can as we force a switch or, you know, put ourselves at full so that we can take on that Mock a little bit, uh, you know, easier and 1v1 it. Um, so that's obviously really, really nice. And uh, yeah, I think Zam can actually do really well if we eliminate one of the Darks or especially if we get rid of Mock um, and Bronzong super chipped or Bronzong doesn't even come because it could just totally not come. He can go raw HO versus me because I think like personally, what I would bring versus me is I'd bring like Toad, Ludi, Mimikyu. Uh, I'd bring Armaldo. And then I'd bring probably Crook and Muck, both of them. <laughs> bring like a Scarf offensive Crook because that Pokemon is really scary versus me too. So um, yeah, that's basically going to be Zam. Next up, we have our Slowbro rocking out with the Culber Berry, Regenerator as its ability, um, Scald, Ice Beam, Slack Off, and Disable. EVs wise, we got max HP, max defense, and four special attack as the leftover four. Uh, we're max max fizz def because his fizz def stats are scary, and I want to be able to take them on. Things like perk can get scary after a power up punch, especially uh, Mianchao can be annoying, especially with like a life orb knockoff. Uh, and I'd love to be able to chew a hit from that crook if it needs, if I need to, and you know either kill it or do a ton of damage to it with Scald. Uh, and then the Muck. It's a great way of, you know, being able to chew a Muck hit, being able to go for Scald. Now you see Disable on there, and I know you're thinking like, what the hell are you Disable for? Um, this is actually one of my main pivots into Muck, um, believe it or not. I think I'm really weak to Curse. What I want to do is I want to pivot into the Muck as it Curses. I will be faster than it at that point. I can throw off a big Disable and uh, stop that thing from cursing if it's AV and throws off a knockoff. Um, obviously, I will chew with my Cold Bird, and I'll be able to uh, potentially disable it after that and then recover up or just off big Scalds because nothing else it's going for is really hurting me. Ice Beam is great for things like Zapdos and Serena. We can stay and kind of spam Scald on things like uh, Bronzong very well. We do have Cleric support in the back. Uh, we can always spam Scald on Mimikyu because it's not actually like ever to it KOing us um, when, uh, you know, it's not boosted up or anything like that, which is dope. And um, yeah, that's basically going to be slow, bro. We have to be careful of like a weird trapping set on the Politoed. Um, I will always scout for that every day of the week if that's ends up what he, uh, you know, ends up going for. And like a Paris Trap uh, is set, but I, I do think that's kind of suboptimal because he kind of wants the rain offense to rip through my team. Um, so yeah, I'd be very surprised to see that. But yeah, that is going to be big slow, bro. Next up, we have our Weavile rocking out the Life Orb, uh, pressures its ability, Ice will Crash, Ice Shard, Knock Off, and Pursuit. EVs wise, we got 28 HP, max attack, 4 defense, 4 speed def, and 220 speed with an adamant nature. EVs wise, we have enough speed for Mianchao. Um, we went max attack and then we put enough no, HP to have a life orb number, which is a number that ends in 9, to have the, uh, you know, maximize our life orb hits. Um, and it just ended up being kind of like perfect numbers, which makes it look like I kind of just went max max, but you know, it happens. Um, this Pokemon rips and it does really, really well in pressuring a lot of his team. Obviously, uh, one of his darkers is being crook, does not want to take an ice crash same thing with mock especially if you get a big knockoff on it um that really really debilitates and cripples that thing i charge is great for priority versus weakened rain threats and then pursuit pursuit is amazing especially for that wrong song now if he's not cold repairy um and he's chipped down a little bit pursuit is going to do a genuine ton to that thing and if i can remove that it makes my zam a lot better it makes my wincon como -O a lot better as well um i can also pursuit trap weakened rain threats when rain is gone things like ludicolo and swamp right after take a bunch of chip uh which is obviously dope but weakened polytoad is also another option to really you know kind of cut down on his rain so pursuits are actually a really really useful option even if i'm not pursuit trapping dark weak pokemon um i can eliminate really important parts of his team if they are sufficiently chipped out and I can call him on the switch and stuff like that. So I think we is actually really, really good in this matchup and just putting on a lot of offensive pressure and uh, helping our Zam and especially helping our Komo'o 
which I believe is our next member, um, and winning the game. Now, come on, oh, we're rocking out with Dragon Dance, Outrage, Close Combat, Shadow Claw with the Dragonium Z. EVs wise, we got 244 HP, 4 attack, 4 uh, defense, 20 to and 236 speed with an adamant nature. Now, uh, the the Kamo here, it's a very interesting spread. You see four attack at him and you're like, why the hell do you have so little attack? I don't need a lot. And uh, the bulk is genuinely amazing. The reason I want a lot bulkier on my Kamo is because I want to live two hits from a lot of things. I want to get up two dragon dances. If the Mimikyu is gone, two dragon dances, even if I'm at like genuinely no HP, means I kind of win the game. Uh, unless he's like fake out me on Shao, which I, I, that would be interesting versus me, in my opinion. Um, he could go for like a fake out Mian Fao, Mian Chao, but I would be genuinely <coughs> I'm flabbergasted to see that, I guess. But uh, once we get up a DD, a plus one Z Outrage blows away the Zapdos. It blows away things like Muck if we need it to. Uh, plus one Coast Combat is doing a ton to Bronzong. It actually does more than Shadow Claw. We are Shadow Claw though because um, he doesn't actually have a ghost immunity and uh, it's a great way of hitting the Mimikyu after Disguise is broken. We will kill that thing with a plus one Shadow Claw after rocks with four attack adamant. Uh, other EVs wise, we we have speed for base 70 Rain Sweepers. So obviously if we get it to plus two, we will outspeed them. We live two Ludicolo Timid Ice Beams if it's not a boosting item, though I do expect it to be a Life Orb set. We do live two of them. Um, and then we Oko Mimikyu after rocks with a plus one Shadow Claw, like I said. And we live two Crocodile Earthquakes, which is obviously really solid. I believe after rocks as well. Um, or at least it's severely in our favor. So I think Kamo can definitely win if we position it correctly, if we get rid of the priority on his team being the Mimikyu. And we get up those two Dragon Dances. It's almost curtains uh, for Trexo here because we never have to actually click Outrage. It's literally just there for the Z. Everything else, we can just click Close Combat or Shadow Claw against and be in a phenomenal, phenomenal position. So really excited for Kamo this week. Then next up, we have our Empoleon rocking out the leftovers. Scald, Stealth Rock, Toxic Flash Cannon, EV Swiss, so got max HP, 92 defense, 4 special attack, 4 special defense, and 156 speed with a bold nature. This Pokemon is actually going to be our main Mimikyu check. It's going to be our rocker. Um, it's a good pivot into things like Politoed. Um, obviously, again, we have to be careful about that Whirlpool set. Uh, it can definitely, definitely come versus me, but to tossing Toxics around on things like Zapdos, uh, if it ends up coming on things like Serena, on things like the uh, Politoed and you know, the Ludicolo and stuff like that really does aid in our team and really ch whip, uh, chipping down his. So we will definitely take that. We do have wish support later on, so we don't, uh, you know, solely rely on leftovers recovery to stay healthy and things like that. And this is just a great fizz def check to a lot of his physical offense outside of Pert, but we have a whole slow row for that. So that's obviously really nice. Uh, we do need to keep this thing healthy. As long as Mimikyu is around, we have to be careful. He could have Drain Punch for it, but I'd be very surprised. I think he needs um, Shadow Claw, Play Rough, and a Shadow Sneak. Uh, I would be genuinely shocked if he didn't have SD. So I don't think he has room, if that makes any sense, to run Drain Punch in this particular matchup because he needs Shadow Claw to break through, bro. So uh, if he doesn't have Shadow Claw, then we're fine. If he doesn't have Play Rough for Komo -o, when DD Komo -o is so good versus him, we're also fine. So we'll definitely take it. I think uh, Envo's a good rocker here as well. And we can keep it pretty healthy with, with Wish Support. We're a good pivot in a Bronzong, especially when it doesn't have like Iron Defense Body Press shenanigans against this gen. Uh, so yeah. That's going to be Empo. And then lastly, we have our floor just rocking out with the leftovers. I believe Flower Veil is the ability we have. Not useful at all. But Moonblast, Wish, Protect, and Heal Bell. Max HP, 36 defense, 4 special attack, 180 speed, and uh, 36 speed. Wait, no. 180 speed death and 36 speed with, I believe, a Calm Nature. And this thing is EV to live two Life Orb Hydro Pumps from Ludi in rain after Protect. But rocks can be up. So that's a very, very iffy check, as you can see. I can take no chip and I can live two after a protect um, in the rain. We obviously can stall protect turns. Heal Bell is great for um, heal building off statics from the Zapdos or heal building off, you know, a potential poison from a poison touch muck or, you know, a bunch of different options like that. Skull burns from the Politoed, Toxics from the Politoed, uh, which is genuinely annoying. Uh, Moon Blast is just to hit general things. Wish and Protect is to keep ourselves healthy and, you know, pivot in on that. Uh, what do you call it? I'm a blanket on its name. Uh, pivot in on that Ludicolo because the rest of our team gets smashed by it. So Forge is actually very important as long as we see Ludicolo. If Ludicolo isn't here, um, it's actually extremely expendable. It doesn't really do anything else. Um, speed, I believe we have enough speed for Adam and Armaldo. Oh, we also have enough speed for Adam and Armaldo on our Empoleon. Because I figured that would actually be pretty important. Um, and yeah, that's going to be the team. Let's go ahead and jump right into the match. 
All right, guys, here we are at the battle. You can see the six that Trexo elected to bring. He's rocking out with the Mianxiao, the Mimikyu, the Zapdos, Armaldo, Alolan Muck, and Bronzog. Now, very, very interesting team. We see no rain. I understand, um, what do you call it? No pert, because we do have some pretty pretty solid, uh, you know, ways of getting around that pert. But I was very ex uh, excited, honestly, to see no rain plus Ludicolo. Ludicolo was very, very difficult for our team to deal with. Um, Armaldo under rain was very difficult for our team to deal with, but now that it's not under rain, I'm not half as scared of it. Um, we do see annoying things like the Mimikyu, which is not fun. We see Mianxiao, which can be very annoying if it's a Scarf variant. We need to pretty much either eliminate that Pokemon or get it to plus two with our Kamo before we can really win, or make sure we're out of range of CC as well. Um, or a uh, high jump kick as well, just in case you see this gen. See, I'm thinking like a gen 8 player. Um, and then we see Zapdos, and Zapdos honestly doesn't scare me a little too much. Uh, just because we have some pretty solid check swooping that doesn't hurricane this gen. But uh, with that being said, let's go ahead and jump on into the battle. Um, I am going to lead off with my Slowbro. The reason I want to lead off with my Slowbro is because I feel like it bleeds best first. Just literally anything he can lead minus that Zapdos. Now, I did not bring a, uh, I did not bring a, sorry, I picked up my migraine from my face in the middle of recording. Uh, I didn't bring a ground this week, so he definitely could lead Zapdos, but I do, again, have sufficient pivots, and my floor just can pretty much be designated for that Pokemon at this point. So, he is going to lead off with the Mianxiao, probably tipping off that he at least has U-Turn, there's going to be some kind of Scarf variant. Regardless, I just off a very free Scald here. Um, realistically, the only good Scald pivot on uh, Mr. Trexo's team is going to be that Muck, and I just need to burn on that thing. If I'm going to burn on it, it's so much less of an issue for me to deal with. Um, but he's going to go into Zapdos. Now, again, I would love a burn on this thing. Um, I think that would be genuinely amazing for me to get but you're gonna see fortunately we don't get a burn here that's fine it's just one skull burn but it obviously would have been nice especially with no uh uh with this thing not having lefties as you saw uh, which would have been super super clutch but i am gonna go right into my flower as he does Volt Switch, definitely a fair play we don't again don't have a ground this week so uh not like we had great pivots into that and i apologize that my green screen's kind of bugging me because of the kind of shirt i'm wearing i'm zooming into the background but we're gonna see muck come out here um this is completely fine uh actually it's not fine so let's kind of talk about this muck um i think i talked about it in the team a good minute i don't have great switches to its stats whatsoever i kind of need to use this thing uh play around this thing in a way that i can pivot around it and get into my offensive threats and get into things that can pressure this thing offensively um if i want to beat it so this is going to be very difficult for me to try and pivot around i'm going to have to make a little you know a series of plays that might look a little bit interesting to you but I, I promise you they make sense at the end of the day at least in my mind again uh, i'm not the best player in the world so i can't say like this is the right play uh, i am going to go into my slow bro i am i am uh what do you call it i am culverberry and i can uh you know take any knockoff really really well and you know subsequently actually take it on pretty well afterwards so we're gonna see actually crunch here and this is a cool bring by trek so maybe he was really expecting me to be colbert and he wanted to have consistent damage on me afterwards uh because that's gonna be really annoying for me to pivot around i don't deal with crunch as well as i do knockoff when i have no item we're gonna throw over scald we're gonna see that this is a for sure assault vest but unfortunately we do not get off the burn and you're gonna see this is a bit of a theme he's gonna crunch get a clean 30 percent poison touch and we're gonna go for yet another scald um and unfortunately not get it again and this is kind of a good a big way that my game plan kind of derives off of him uh what do you call it uh him getting that skull burn because then i can take him on much much easier so i'm going to pivot out here into my employee on this is a little bit tough because i don't want to pivot into this thing if i don't have to simply because of the fact that um this is my mimic check and you're gonna see immediate defense drop this really sucks because now i can't stay in and bait a skull burn that crunch wasn't doing all that much much with our lefties brick break honestly isn't doing a lot easier because this thing isn't super invested so um at least you know for my couch in game I, don't, I didn't actually ask him for his team or his spreads or anything like that so this defense drop well again while it seems very minuscule these things start adding up over the course of the game and it makes pokemon like this much easier to do uh much harder to deal with than they you know realistically should be so you're gonna see i'm gonna get some lefties back i would have felt very comfortable staying in and getting uh you know getting more scald chip off maybe even getting in my rock something like that probably getting a scald off uh, but i'm gonna have to pivot out into my fairy type on this muck and again i told you i don't switch into this thing very well because i definitely didn't take that brick break very well and i pretty much was asking to lose to mimikyu at that point if i didn't do so so i'm gonna pivot out you get a brick break get another poison touch so you know the uh again this obviously isn't trex's fault he's playing this muck how he thinks he should play it like it, it's it i don't switch into it he shouldn't need to switch right now but the rng just certainly isn't in our favor at this point if that makes any sense so we're going to see, I'm going to go out into my Empoleon right here on a Poison Jab. So we're slowly kind of starting to pivot around this thing. But again, 
I need that skull burn. I've thrown off, I believe, four skulls at this point. Um, it's either three or four, and you're going to see I'm going to throw off another one, which is either four or five. And again, I just don't get the burn, man. It's uh, it's not looking too hot for uh, your uh, your hero here. So we're going to take a fat chunk from that crunch. Definitely not ideal. Our Empoleon is getting very, very, very chipped. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pivot out, and I'm basically going to slack off my bro. Now, Trex are right here. He's going to make a bit of an interesting play. He's actually going to poison jab, and I... I understand why he made this play, and again, when I say this, I don't mean this in a rude way, and I don't think Trexo thinks this either. He's a really nice guy. Um, but when I do these post comms and I do, uh, you know, Gen 7 replays and stuff like that, I want to be as analytical as humanly possible because I feel like that's the whole point of, you know, doing post comms is to deeply, you know, talk about your thought process, talk about your opponents, what you think should have happened, things like that. So, in my mind, I don't think he ever should have poison jabbed. If I stayed in the skull, I think this was a bit of a choke play. I think that crunch plus poison jab is so much more free. You don't need to predict my floor just coming in because my floor just doesn't really touch you. You can poison jab me afterwards, if that makes any sense. So this play, if I would have just stayed in and said, screw it, I'm sacking off and pulling, which I was very, very close to doing just to get another skull off, see if I can get some happening. Because if I add the burn, I can get on my rocks to turn afterwards. If I just stayed in, you know, got that big, uh, got that big scald off and got the burn he got nothing out of that turn um and then i would have been safe to sack off my bro or even go into my bro and try and recover up on this thing or something like that so i think this play was a bit unnecessary on track so i understand he's trying to make a play it also does get annoying when people are trying to pivot around you forever and it's just like ah you're switching in this as i click this i understand that i don't agree with this play personally but at the end of the day you know ends up working at the end of the day i was trying to sack my bro i just feel like when you're doing post comms you might as well be analytical you know and and that's you know my analysis of the play at the very least he can freely brick break here in case i want to be weird and pivot out into my empoleon um but obviously there's there's no reason for me to and now i can go out into my sneasel i mean my weavile um i didn't want to lose my life orb earlier my life orb was very important in a lot of calc so i couldn't really pivot out and if this thing caught me with a um a brick break i was obviously sent packing so i'm gonna crash i am gonna fortunately hit and at this range of health muck does always die to this so that's obviously great crit didn't matter i don't believe um so i guess we get a little bit of rng in our favor but you know it's unfortunately in a moment in which it just doesn't really help us at this point so mian is gonna come out and at this point i don't have a mian shell switch in um i am going to switch out into my floor just um i am spadef floor just i guess in my mind, I feel like he should know this based on the calcs. Um, so he might not be calcing. Um, and I know Trex has mostly been playing Gen 8 lately, as we have too. But we have a lot of time to calc in these games. Um, he probably should have CC there. I think with Poison, um, I might have been in range of 2. CC, I mean, you see how much this U-turn does. I think I might have been 2, two at KO by CC. Or I was at least forced into a Wish and Protect turn or something like that. And he could have gained a little bit of momentum like that. So I feel like, I mean, uh, High Jump Kick, sorry. Uh, high, high jump kick definitely would have 2 it killed me. And then he would have probably had to pivot out on a protect or something like that. But it just gave him a little bit more offensive pressure in my mind. But honestly, it's fine because he elects to go out into his Zapdos. And what this is going to allow me to do is actually going to allow me um, to wish out. Well, I think I'm going to heal bell this turn. Um, yeah, just in case he wanted to get up some kind of roost or anything. No, I wish right here. Just in case he wanted to volt switch, something like that. I could potentially protect. And even if I died to Thunderbolt plus Poison um, afterwards... I could always just, you know, go into something that, you know, was able to be benefited by that wish. So I could go into my Komoo and try and get up a couple Dragon Dances. Or, and probably not though, because I guess the Mimikyu's still sitting around there. But you know what I mean. I, I could at least, you know, take advantage of it. I go into my Weavile, put on an imme immediate offensive pressure, and put him in a position where um, I wasn't even taking Life Orb Chip. It, it would make it a little bit harder to pivot around. But I'm going to be able to protect right here. Um, I believe if he was offensive, Thunderbolt was a roll to kill me. Um, I think Thunderbolt actually would have killed me. I know Discharge needed like a max roll, and obviously he was Thunderbolt right there. So he's going to wish um, Volt Switch right here. I believe I am just going to heal Bell, get this poison off of me so that I can, you know, more likely try and check that Mian shell. Though it's not going to be super easy to do so because we are super spadef. As he actually likes to go on our mall though. And this was interesting to me because in my head I was like, oh shit, Bronzong's coming in. And uh, it's annoying. But yeah, I guess you'll see why he doesn't go Bronzong later. He's uh, he's, he's definitely not you know your typical defensive Bronzong or anything like that this week. So I am going to go for a Moonblast. I don't want to allow this thing to set up for free in the slightest. And I didn't want to go hard into my Empoleon on a potential um, Earthquake. And I know I don't Oko this thing with Scald, especially without the rain. So I want to be careful is it's actually going to reveal curse and in my head i'm like ah shit this is pretty interesting um you know i i don't actually to it ko him uh due to him being pretty darn fat on this thing and obviously the lefty's residual so i'm kind of put in a tough spot right because in my mind 
his best play, and he's going to make his best play, is going to be to click Earthquake. Because what it's going to do is it's going to put me in range of this plus Aqua Jet. And I assume he has Aqua Jet if he's cursed. Um, and it also catches my Empoleon trying to come in and be super aggressive. And losing my Empoleon is no bueno at this point in the match. It still soft checks Bronzong. It still checks the Mimikyu uh, prior to a sword stance and things like that. And I feel like it's a little bit more valuable than... Um, this floor just while well, yes i am in a bit of a tough spot against that mian xiao um i can still position myself with my kamoa later if i am able to find a position to um you know break that mimikyu's disguise i can actually very much so win with my kamoa so that would obviously be great so i am going to moon blast um bring this thing down very very low as it is going to get a special attack drop so again some pretty clean hacks in our way um but an earthquake's gonna pop here from the armaldo and that's gonna do a metric shit ton because we are uh, very very much so super deaf now i figured he would probably go for an aqua jet here and part of me almost wanted to pivot out into empoleon because of uh being able to preserve a sack versus that scarf mian shell could be legitimately phenomenal but at the end of the day i felt it wasn't a risk worth taking because if i lost my empoleon i lost my empoleon and pretty much my floor just and i felt like i could not afford to uh to lose those pieces at this point in the game because we're not at the point in the game yet where we just auto lose if that makes uh you know any sense so i am gonna go out into my empoleon right here i'm in a pretty good spot i can just click scald part of me wanted to get on my rocks in case he clicked aqua jet for some reason i think this is a bit of a sus play because you're gonna see I, he gets like a net of four hp off on me because of my leftovers and i knock him out anyways and if i elected to get him my rocks there or something like that um an earthquake would have punished me much much more and he would have gotten so much more out of that turn and i and i think like the net gain of you know getting off i guess um seven hp off of me just in my mind isn't super super worth it because getting rocks up for this zapdos would have been you know really really obnoxious for him to deal with um for sure so I am going to preserve my Empoleon right here. I just feel like it's a little too valuable. Fortunately, I'm forced to go into my Zam. I don't want to take any unnecessary chip on my combo because there are potential scenarios in which I can live two hits from certain XYZ Pokemon. And I feel like that's pretty valuable at this point. And again, this is a point in the game where I'm thinking he's for sure going bronze on, but I see the name D-Ray sniped and I know that means Mimikyu. And Mimikyu is definitely annoying, but I see this as my opportunity to break this thing's disguise. Now, if you guys remember from the... That's really, really bright. Um, if you guys remember from the team builder... I'm a very defensive Alakazam. Incredibly defensive. I, did, I lived a knockoff into a sneak from that muck. I lived a Scarf Crocodile knockoff uh, after Rock. I'm very, very defensive. I actually always guaranteed live this hit unless he's adamant life warp. Um, and I figured that information was good to have. And breaking this thing's um, disguise, genuinely amazing. So I'm going to stay in. I'm going to side shock. Again, I don't have great switch into this thing at this point anyways because my Empoleon is so darn shipped. I figured that this was going to be my best option to uh kind of dealing with this thing as he's actually going to like to go for a play rough and you're gonna see right here we actually live big defensive zam coming up mucho mucho clutch again wanted to potentially pivot out on the shadow sneak but i felt uh, as if it, it really wasn't worth it in case something you know went awry so i am going to sack off my zam there but it was able to break the mimikyu's disguise which is obviously really really nice as i am going to go into my weave up and this after reflecting now i was very post post this game i was a bit upset with um kind of the luck that uh kind of went into this but this this was an objectively bad play by me um uh, and i will 100 percent admit this you're gonna see i'm gonna icicle crash here should not have icicle crashed ever um in my head because i didn't do enough research pre-game i forgot if he was z move on his mimic if it was his z captain it wasn't his z captain at all um but in my head i'm like ah might be a z captain and i just didn't think to check i should have taken the time check either pre-game or during this because knockoff does more if he's holding an item for sure does more and actually pretty much guaranteed knocked him out from here crash was a roll depending on his spread and things like that so i just went for a crash to get that guaranteed damage off i should have knocked off though um because you're gonna see right here he is going to live and um knockoff would have killed for sure knockoff guaranteed knock that thing out from that point and he is going to be able to trick room right here um and the fact that he trick roomed is very very unfortunate it's going to make it to where it's very difficult for me to pivot around so instead of going for the ice shard kill i'm actually going to make a series of plays trying to stall, uh, stall out this trick room a little bit i'm going to go into um I'm going to go into my Empoleon right here because I expect him to play rough. He's actually going to miss. So I guess that's a little bit nice for us because we're going to get a little bit of lefties back uh, and actually be, you know, uh, above half now, which is genuinely amazing as I am going to actually, I believe, get up my rocks at this point in the game. Because again, I'm trying to stall the turns a little bit as he goes hard out into his Bronzong. And I wish, I wish, I wish I scalded, but I guess rocks are fair too because that Mimikyu is dead upon entry, which is absolutely amazing for us. So now the Bronzong comes out. It has turned to Trick Room. The way he's played this thus far 
really tips me off to believe he's pretty much in a, he's a pretty big offensive trick room uh, Bronzong. However, Earthquake does not knock us out from here. We're a very defensive Napoleon. We're, uh, you know, we have pl we have boosting nature and defense, and uh, we should be able to take this hit always. Stall a turn of trick room, uh, an extra turn of trick room, and get a big scald off, potentially burn this thing. And if we can burn this thing, we are in a phenomenal, phenomenal spot. So I am going to uh, get Earthquaked and, uh, and get crit. And this basically seals the game for us. Uh, this crit was astronomical. And even if I didn't get the burn, um, you're going to see later in the game, it's, it would have put him in range of, uh, you know, specific hits and things like that. So I am going to go into my Weavile. What I almost did is on this Dire Ball, pivot into my Kamo'o to waste another turn of the Trick Room. But I felt as if it wasn't worth it uh, because of the fact that I I kind of needed Kamo at full HP in order to win this, but I suppose it may have been a little bit nicer because I would have gotten my Kamo in for free and then uh, been able to sit up there and still have my Weavile in the back. However, Weavile was a little bit less useful than Kamo -O at this point because Weavile can't be the Scarf, uh, Scarf uh, Mian Xiao at all unless he misses that high jump kick or something like that. So I figured it would be a little bit more beneficial for me to get that free switch into Kamo -O without Trick Room being up and then I can drag and dance uh, hopefully two times depending on his spread and try and win the game from there. So this game isn't 100% over, if that makes any sense. So I am going to drop to the Skyro Ball. Definitely unfortunate, but I believe there is going to be no more turn to Trick Room, which is awesome. I kind of do have to bank on the fact that he is not, um, what do you call it? He's not Trick Room himself on his Bronzong, as I am going to drag and dance on up, get it to plus one. Now, unfortunately, plus one close combat and plus one Shadow Claw does not kill as he goes for his own headbutt here, and he is going to connect, and this is scary, because you're going to see right there, he goes down to, he does about 90 HP there, so I should live two of them, uh, granted rolls and things like that, but I should lose this game too, because plus two also does not kill him, I'm not Phytinium Z, I'm not Ghost TMZ, I'm Dragonium, so I can't knock this thing out at plus two. So unfortunately, I'm just going to go for it. Hail Mary. Shadow Claw is a high crit move, and I feel like I deserve it at this point. Um, I wouldn't be too upset if I got that Shadow Claw clip. He's going to Zen Headbutt, and he's actually going to miss. Now, this puts me back in the game. Now, I know the Shadow Claw won't kill, and I know Close Combat does a little bit more, but I 2-hit KO regardless. Close Combat does not kill. And there's a high crit move, and provided I get, you know, good similar rolls, and I don't get pretty much max rolled on the Zen Headbutt, because we are a very bulky Kamo. Oh, we should actually be able to live this next one and win the game from here. So Kamo should be able to bring it back here because we are going to Shadow Claw. Our defenses won't drop because of it. For unfortunately, we don't get the crit. Crit would have sealed us a KO, but it's all good. You can't really, you know, pray for crits. As he is going to Zen Headbutt, and you're going to see, unfortunately, <laughs> gets the roll. So um, we are going to drop this game 4-0 against Trek. So GG's to him again. No shit to him at all in this, uh, in this video. I was pretty salty after the game. I feel like if he was upset with... You know what i thought about the game he probably would tell me then because i was super baby rage mad uh, again no no shade to him i don't think he played this game necessarily bad i think this is a this is a good testament to well one i made that bad play with weavile 100 percent trick room would have never been up but i don't think that really mattered in the grand scheme of things i think the game still would have played out very very similarly um Unless, unless we can live two high jump kicks with our Kamo, which I don't even know if we could. We actually kind of got better positioning because of it because he wanted to go for the trick room kind of idea. But um, I think it was a matter of showing that how a bunch of little things, and while it may not be game defining hacks, like this thing lost me the game this last turn crit, like say our game against Jorge and BBR, where we got lost in the last two turns because of a, a flinch and then a crit, right? That game was like game defining. This is what lost me the game. I won the game otherwise. This one was, a slow battle full of a bunch of tiny things not really going our way because of the RNG dependent game that Pokemon is and a bunch of small things kind of going Trexo's way and it, while it wasn't ever game defining this lost me the game those things added up made me feel as if I never really had a shot in this game um, and I guess that's Pokemon um, this game sucks but we all play it so you can't complain too much at the end of the day it's week one i just need to bounce back next week hopefully do well enough we play slick who's definitely a very very good player hopefully we can snag a win from him. i'm already uh, built and ready for that one to go as i've uh, recorded this uh battle and stuff like that so hopefully we can snag a win from him uh, and just just bounce back again jesus attract so definitely check him out in the description below he's a very very nice guy again and when i when i upload this video i mean no disrespect to him and like you know my analysis of like where i think the poison jet play wasn't a very good play kind of thing because i again i'll say it straight up my my icicle crash play was an awful play that play made no sense it was just me not being prepared uh, and not understanding my opponent's team fully so 
Again, it happens, but uh, unfortunately we're going to take an L week one of PMU. Hopefully, hopefully we can bounce back. I really like our team still. I really think that we have the pieces to go far here in PMU. It's just a matter of using them correctly. But um, again, thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to drop a like. If you're new here, be sure to sub, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Later.